Hello, my name is Anthony Horowitz. I'm the author of the Alex Ryder books, and here's an extraordinary thought. I wrote the first Alex Ryder novel more than 20 years ago, sitting at this very desk. It's actually even older than I am. Uh, and I've also written the most recent one, Nightshade Revenge. Here it is. It's the sequel to Nightshade, the adventure which came out about two or three years ago and set Alex up against a new terrorist organization made up of young people his own age, kids who have been brainwashed. This new book begins with Alex and his best friend, Tom Harris, skateboarding on the south bank of the River Thames here in London. And for reasons they don't understand, two men suddenly appear, grab Tom Harris and kidnap him. And Alex realises he has to get him back. But Tom is put into a car and driven away. And all Alex has is his skateboard. This is what happens. He was too late. With a sense of despair, he watched the red Honda flash past in front of him. At least he hadn't lost it. The driver had turned right onto Westminster Bridge and was heading towards the centre of town with Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament on the other side of the river. With his heart pounding and his breath catching in his throat, Alex reached the top step and jumped back onto the skateboard. At the same time, he heard the sound of an approaching siren, and for a moment he wondered if the police had somehow learned about the kidnap and were coming to his rescue. But as he joined the road and set up after the Honda, he saw a single police car overtake him and then suddenly swing round at 90 degrees, blocking his way. It was him they were after. Someone must have reported a crazy skateboard rider endangering people's lives on the south bank. Two police officers got out of the car and held up their hands, signalling to him to stop. On the other side of the police car, the red Honda was getting away. Alex wasn't going to let that happen. He was almost halfway across the bridge. The skateboard was carrying him ever closer to the officers who were waiting for him to slow down. But at the last minute, he carved right, then ollied up between two bollards, shooting back onto the pavement. The way ahead was blocked. It seemed as if the whole city was against him. A group of about 30 primary school children was heading towards him in a crocodile escorted by two teachers. Alex couldn't continue forward. The children weren't going to step out of the way, but nor could he get back onto the road without delivering himself into the hands of the police. He made an instant decision and ollied a second time, flying diagonally towards the very edge of the bridge as if he intended to hurl himself into the Thames. He had judged it perfectly. He actually landed on the handrail with the wheels divided on either side. It was a move known as a 50-50 grind, and he'd done it many times, but not like this. Alex was horribly aware of the river far below. If he lost his balance, he would plunge five or six metres into the water. If the impact didn't kill him, he'd probably drown. The very thought of it made him shudder, and the tiny movement almost finished him, tilting him into the air. Still grinding on the handrail, he fought for balance and somehow managed to find it. With both hands out, he steadied himself and prepared for the next move. Alex could hear the aluminium trucks on the underside of his skateboard. They were the T-shaped pieces that connected his wheels, and they seemed to be crying out in protest. He glimpsed the two police officers staring at him in disbelief. The children were right next to him, chattering excitedly. One of them had his phone out and was trying to take a picture. Alex was slowing down, losing momentum. Time to go. He leaned forward and then jumped back onto the pavement. He'd made it. He had got past the crowd of children. The police were scrambling back into their car, but there was no way they could turn around quickly enough. By the time they came after him, he'd be gone. Even so, the manoeuvre had cost him time. The Honda was a long way in front of him, turning into Parliament Square. Alex passed through a set of traffic lights with Big Ben looming over his left shoulder. Everywhere he looked, there were armed policemen on patrol. He knew that their job was to protect the politicians passing in and out of Parliament, but that didn't make him feel any more comfortable. How many laws had he broken in the last few minutes? There was a second set of traffic lights in front of him. As Alex approached, they turned red. He went through anywhere. It was too late to stop. At the very last minute, he saw a black shape bearing down on him. A taxi had come out of nowhere. He couldn't avoid it. It was too close. With a cry, Alex tried one last carving turn. His knees bent, his head low. The taxi 
filled his vision. He glimpsed the driver, twisting the steering wheel, trying to avoid him. The side of the vehicle hit his arm with tremendous force, and at the same moment, the front wheel of a skateboard slammed into the curb. Alex was sent flying. The whole world corkscrewed around him, and for two or three seconds, he was quite certain he was going to die.